Hi everyone. Nice to see you all, although I can't actually see you, but I imagine you in my head. So today I wanted to talk a bit about goals, which is very appropriate considering we are coming up to the new year. And by the time I post this, it might actually already be the new year. And goals are, you know, they're awesome to have and they're really super important. But if you're in a relationship, it's can be the make or break of your goals having your partner on board so I wanted to talk a bit about a vision together as a partnership um, and even if you are single I think it is something to really think about when you are dating people and to just be really honest with each other and ask each other like what do you want straight up and get really clear on that because like if your values are different from your partner's values or your ideas about what's in, what's really important and what are non-negotiables, let's say one really wants kids and the other one doesn't want kids. Well, both decisions are really fair decisions and neither one should be made to feel bad or pushed into a corner to live a kind of life that they don't necessarily want to live, right? And there are some things that you can't compromise on. It's not like, oh, we'll have half a kid. I mean, maybe you could do that. You could like share a kid or something. I don't think that's a thing. It would probably be illegal if it was. Um, but so if you have lost my train of thought now, I just imagine like, would there be a share a kid app or what would that look like? <laughs> anyway, so what I wanted to speak about is how to get really clear on what you want and how to communicate it with your partner and how to listen to what your partner wants as well and get them to really speak about it and open up because you know we, we work on ourselves if you are a professional you probably do ongoing study um if you're fit and healthy you know you go to the gym every day you do the work if you're in a relationship it's probably not going to work if you don't do the work together. Like you need to have a structure. You need to have some things that you're working towards and you need to sit down and talk about it. Otherwise, it's like you don't really know where you're going and it's likely that you'll get to two years, three years. You'll be like, what's happening here? Is this all there is? Well, yeah, it is all there is if you're not doing any work. So I really suggest working out what your vision is and then in that vision, where does your partner fit in? What kind of relationship do you have? Is it one where you do everything together? Are you, do you share the same hobbies? Or is it one where you're really independent and you, you see each other you know, only occasionally? Do you live together? You don't live together. Are you married? Are you not married? What exactly does it look like? And remembering there's no wrong answers and not to feel pressured by what the other person wants. Like really think about what you want and in your soul, what would be the ultimate expansive relationship and how would that look for you? For me, it probably looks really different from a lot of other people. Like I don't really want to get married and I don't really want to have kids right now. Like I really value my freedom. And for me, that is something that I need. I need space to be myself. I need support to be myself. I need encouragement and I need freedom. I'm not down with someone who is protective or tells me who I can and can't be friends with. I want to go out and have dinner with a guy friend if I want to. You know, that's something that's important to me and that's a non-negotiable. And that's something that I actually put up with my current partner straight up when we first got together. We actually started in an open relationship because I wasn't quite ready to commit to someone. And we started being so open, literally, <laughs> with each other from the start. And I'm not, it wasn't easy, but I'm so glad we had that experience together where we didn't put boundaries on each other you know we just let each other do what the other person wants to do and felt love and gratitude for them if they're getting pleasure or they're having a great time with their friends or they're doing really well in business rather than thinking about how you're not involved or how maybe you're not good enough or they're not spending enough time with you think about what they're achieving and if you really love somebody you'll be happy for them for them to achieve for them to get pleasure for them to succeed yeah it's not a competition 
So work out what your vision is. Work out what kind of relationship do you want and ask yourself, is this from a place of fear of you know what relation what things should look like so fear is not the right word is does this come from a place of social pressures is this just what i've grown up with and i think this is the norm to have kids get married opposite order buy a house and you know if they're the things you really want that's awesome as well but really ask yourself what do i want what does it what does a relationship look like that is going to fulfill me and then ask your partner to do the same thing maybe you sit down together you block out 20 minutes and you write down your visions and i like to break it up into a couple of different parts that are important to me so health what does um, what am i eating what does my body feel like how much exercise am i doing what kind of exercise am i doing Am I doing it for fun? How do I feel inside myself? What do I look like? Then I go into spirituality. You know, that's not not a lot of people, not all. so many people of our generation and in my circle of friends in back in Australia anyway, in Bali is different, really think about spirituality. Spirituality is not necessarily religion. I mean, I'm not religious, but I do believe that there is, I have a greater connection than just within myself. I believe I'm connected to the universe, I'm connected to the earth, and I believe that there is phenomena and there are things that are unexplained. And so tapping in to the source of the universe and also the source of myself. So spirituality is something that's really important to me. Then I have career as well. What does my career look like? What am I doing? Um, Am I growing my own business? Am I working for other people? Am I doing a mix of different things? Then I go into my relationship. What does it look like with my partner? What does it look like with my family? What does it look like with my friends? You know, am I seeing my mum every, there's like some mouse or something jumping in the jungle in front of me. <laughs> what am I, with my mum, you know, I'd love to go away and travel with her every year. So that's something that I put in my schedule with my dad we like to we both ultra runners and i like to do a race with him so in my vision it's we race together and we explore together with my partner it's we travel together we support each other in business in love we have a passionate relationship what do you do for fun what are your hobbies i like to surf i like to go swimming i like to run i like to do so many different things <laughs> And then also I have one for self-development and growth. So what does that involve? What does that look like for me? What does the most expansive version of Freya look like? What is my vision of that? I really suggest if your partner is not ready for that, then just ask them, you know, what, what does your relationship look like? Then from there, once you have your vision, you speak about it with each other and you'll probably find not necessarily, but there might be things that come up that are quite different. You know, one person, I'll give you an example of my own relationship, is that I'm, I can work remotely and I wanna work from wherever I wanna be. I wanna work from Bali, I wanna work from Hawaii, maybe spend a little while in Australia. Chris is in a different position where he is working from an office. So it's about navigating that together and rather than thinking like this person's holding me back or me resenting him for not me feeling like I can't do the things I want to do and live the kind of life that I want to live and him resenting me for feeling like I'm pushing him into something that's not possible he doesn't believe it's possible for him right now instead we talk about it and we're like okay what's a non what 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 can you compromise with and can you compromise in a way that's supportive and not one that's going to leave either of us feeling like we're missing out so we've spoken about this and we've made an agreement that i'm going to stay in australia for a year and then after the year we're, we're going to work really hard to get chris online and in a year we're going to move and start to live from wherever we want to probably Bali, maybe some other places. 
you know, and if that doesn't happen, if Chris is not able to at that point, well, then it might look like we'll reevaluate. It might look like me going and living in these places and then coming back and we're doing like a long distance and spending a few months with each other throughout the year. I don't know what it looks like, but I know what my soul tells, tells me, you know, this is a non-negotiable for me. I, freedom is so important and we have to be true to ourselves. So even things like this, you know, it can be really difficult to have these conversations and to face them. But if you don't follow what your heart tells you to do, then you're going to be living a half-filled life. You know, you've got to do what you want to do and be compassionate along the way. And yeah, make compromises. You've got to be open and you've got to communicate with your partner about what's important to you. Then the next step once you've created your vision, you've spoken about your non-negotiables, then start to work through your goals. So what are the steps you're going to take to make this vision happen? And ask each other, you know, what are the steps that each other need to take? And that's going to keep you both accountable as well. And you can make it kind of fun and ask each other, you know, is it okay for me to um, pull you up on things? Ask permission before giving your partner a hard time. If your partner does not hold a big vision and you're holding the big vision, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with them. You don't need to change them. You do need to know if your non-negotiables are really different and if your values are really different. You know, that's something that you need to look at really closely. And even if you're dating, like I mentioned before, you need to be really thinking about the person you're dating. Like, is this someone that has the same values as me? Am I wasting my time? And if they don't, you know, I would question why are you in this relationship? Is this fulfilling yourself and is it fulfilling them? And, you know, if it is, and if it is where you want to be, then you can hold the vision for the other person, right? You can hold a big vision for them. They might not be there yet. They might not be ready to meet you there. Don't make them feel bad about it. You know, support them, encourage them. The best way to motivate someone is by your own actions, by how you live your own life. If they see that you're high vibing, you know, if you want your partner, for example, I'm, I'm vegan, right? And I'm really conscious about what I eat, particularly animal products. And when I first met Chris, I mean, he didn't like chickens, so we didn't eat it anyway. But when I first met Chris, he was eating meat. And now he's really conscious about the kind of meat that he eats. He fishes, um, spearfishes his own fish. And if he eats meat, it's meat that's not farmed. And I have respect for that. You know, at least he, he's really thinking about where he gets his meat from. And if he's eating animal products, he has deep respect for the animal that he's getting it from. It's not like he's buying factory farmed eggs. I mean, personally, I don't eat any animal products. But... That is something I hold the vision for us and for him and for the world at large. You know, I hold this vision where there is no violence. We don't, we don't eat animals. We treat each other fairly. We have compassion for everyone around us. I'm saying this and there's like gunshots in the background. I'm pretty sure there's like a guy shooting chickens. I'm just making that up. I'm going to change that story and maybe it's like a big pinata or something. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> um, yeah, so holding the vision for your partner, for yourself, maybe even for the world as well, for the world to be a better place because everything that exists right now is a manifestation of what someone once thought. You know, this phone or this computer that you're, that you're looking at, this was once just a thought and then it became something physical in front of us. Our thoughts are so powerful. So if we hold these thoughts of positive creation and of the way that we want our lives to look, the way that we want our relationships to be and the way that we want the universe to be, well then it's going to be, right? Particularly if we all hold this big vision. So I really encourage you to speak to your partner, do vision work. This is a really great time to do it before the new, before the year. I mean, I do it all. The, I do it any time's a good time, right? There's no point in holding it off. But I know people like to do things new year, new year, new you, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, be compassionate with each other, listen to each other, and be understanding. And get a coach. <laughs> Chris and I have got a relationship coach, and I do coaching. 
I do coaching with money because actually that's the number one reason that people break up is around money. So if you want to reach out, please reach out to me. I'm really happy to have a conversation about it or help any way that I can. See you guys.